I'm here today to discuss whether sleep is a natural healer or a complete waste of time and also to convey a very important message to the young people here today. I'm a very regular person, i.e. I keep regular hours, and I'm very concerned with the sleep culture that's prevalent today. And we should be, all be concerned, because unlike HIV AIDS, SARS, H1N1, there's no panic because there's no hype. But recent, in recent years, psychologists and psychiatrists in the developed world are now hitting the panic button because sleep is taking a toll on our health and our productivity. Scientists tell us that sleep deprivation even erodes the very fabric of our lives, our genes. The good genes are suppressed and the genes that promote cancer are promoted that cannot and should not be compromised. It's about time that we take sleep seriously. First, let's just take a look at how the concepts of sleep evolved from fantasy to the science that we know today. The Greeks believed that sleep comes when Hypnos, the god of sleep, and his wife Pasithea the goddess of sleep and relaxation, visit us, often accompanied by Morpheus, their son, who is the god of dreams. They believed that Hypnos was afraid of daylight and hid in a cave full of poppies. To be in the arms of Morpheus means to sleep. Of course, this picture does not show Morpheus, but me 12 years ago. Most of us sleep around eight hours a night, and that means that we're spending about a third of our lives in sleep. Is that justified? It's a question that we have to answer. From then, science progressed, and they observed that there are sleep rhythms embedded in plants and animals. Some plants sleep at night, like the mimosa, but this plant, the kumudra, or the night lotus, blooms at night and wills at daybreak. Sleep requirements vary between species. Infants need around 16 to 20 hours of sleep, and snakes about 18, and the koala bear is the, the champion with 22 hours of sleep a night. What is sufficient for us is not sufficient for the koala bear. The scripture also tells us that there's a time and place for everything. A time to sleep, a time to wake. All animals are born with three biological or physiological needs, as the previous ex uh, speaker has said. The need for food, the need for sleep, and the need for sex. They stay very attuned to nature. They sleep when they're tired, they eat when they're hungry, and they have sex as dictated by nature. They don't need alarm clocks, pills, doctors, hospitals, or psychiatrists. They go to the, the salt licks when the hypothalamus tells them that the blood sodium is low. What about us? We are so smart that we divorce ourselves from nature. We play God with our bodies. We ignore the signals that our, our bodies are sending out desperately. We overeat, undersleep, and have sex indiscriminately. They say that man is the only animal that eats without hunger, drinks without thirst, and wakes up when he's sleepy. Within the sleep cycle itself are sleep cycles, lasting about an hour. So each of us would go through six to eight sleep cycles a night, depending on how long you sleep. When we go to sleep, we descend from the awake stage, down four stages to deep sleep. Stages three and four are the stages of deep sleep. Most of us will go from the awake stage to stage one, two, three, four, by passing the REM phase. The REM phase is the dream phase. But if we're sleep deprived or we have a mental health problem, then just as we go to sleep, we start dreaming. That is a red alert signal for us. The REM is the rapid eye movement sleep. 
referring to the movements of the eye following the movements in our dreams. The rest of the muscles in the body are paralyzed, but the, mu the muscles that move the eye are very much active in that phase. Stage three and four is deep sleep, where growth hormone secretion is the highest. And as the night progresses, the sleep becomes lighter and lighter till we wake up finally. It's worthy of note that we need both phases of, this, of sleep. We need deep sleep for our physical health and the REM for our mental health. Experiments have shown that people woken up when they, are, when they start dreaming get hallucinations soon enough. So what drives these cycles? We now know that we have sleep centers in the brain stem. And there are two centers there, the spontaneously active waking up center, which sends out impulses throughout the, all of the brain, keeping us awake and alert. And we have the sleep cycle, which, is, which goes to inhibit the waking cycle when it gets dark. These centers are influenced by three factors, external and internal factors, the biological clock, and the hormones. Now, it's common knowledge. I'm sure everybody has experienced difficulty in falling asleep when the room is very hot or cold, or when you're anxious about something, or when you have pain, or when it's very noisy. Some people even believe that food will influence our sleep. You know, it's, it's a common um, belief in Burma that if you eat Ngatalau, Hilsa, you, are, you get very sleepy. And if after you eat turkey at Christmas, you feel sleepy because of the tryptophan. And we are told that we need to, to drink hot milk at night because tryptophan makes us have sweet dreams. Now, going to the biological clock. The biological clock exists in the hypothalamus. And it has its own rhythm, but it's also very sensitive to the solar light dark cycles. When it gets dark, what happens is the biological clock sends impulses to the pineal gland to produce melatonin. Melatonin stimulates the sleep center, and the sleep center inhibits the waking center, and we go to sleep. Melatonin secretion continues till about 9 o'clock, after which it starts falling, and stops about 7.30 a.m. So when it gets light, we wake up. Animals wake up at the crack of dawn, but we don't. We, re we, de we rely on the alarm clock. Not that it always works. We, we once missed a flight from Dublin to Vienna because the alarm clock didn't work on a weekend. So this biological clock is very sensitive to the light-dark circle, cycles, and sleep is defined as a temporary state of unconsciousness from which we can be roused. What about a state when we cannot be roused? That's called coma. And coma will result if the waking center is suppressed by abnormal stimuli, such as toxins or drugs or metabolic waste. And what happens then is we are unrousable. Looking at the hormones, everybody knows that melatonin makes you sleep. So when you're going to take a long flight, we're advised to take melatonin. On the other hand, we have the waking up hormone, which, which is orexin or hypocretin, which is produced by the brain. It has more to do with regulation of food intake, but it also has a role in our, our sleep-wake rhythms because they have demonstrated time and again that Orexin deficiency is related to narcolepsy. When everything is normal, we go to sleep. But how much sleep do we need? The sleep requirements vary between species and individuals and, and with age. Infants need around 16 to 20 hours a night, but they only need about 12 by their first birthday. The standard eight hours sleep is recommended by the time we're 14 and throughout our adult lives, but it falls a little bit with age. It's worthy of note that the REM phase is drastically reduced in older people. So people our age don't dream that much. 
What about individual variations? Napoleon, Margaret Thatcher, Thomas Edison made do with four hours of sleep. Maybe that's, that makes them geniuses and more productive, or maybe because they're geniuses that they need very little sleep. But on the other hand, on the other side of the spectrum is Albert Einstein, and Einstein needed 10 hours of sleep. How many Einsteins do we have here, I wonder? <laughs> right, so let's go back to our question. Is sleep a natural healer or a complete waste of time? My generation remembers this adage, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. I'm not so sure about the wealth and the wisdom, but I would vouch for health. Because sleep is a restorative process. Firstly, sleep is a physiological response to the body's signals that it's tired. Lives are repaired, and restoration processes occur during sleep. The parasympathetic nervous system which is the hormone, which is the system for rest and relaxation, takes predominance, and the sympathetic nervous system, which prepares us for fight or flight, takes a back seat. So what happens now is everything is slowed down. The heart rate, respiration, metabolism, muscle activity, brain activity, even cortisol, our survival hormone, is reduced. It's like an airplane on auto cruise or our phones on, on airplane mode. Outside influences are shut down and energy is conserved. Not only that, what also happens is, as I've said before, growth hormone levels are very much increased during sleep and so growing children need to really sleep. Furthermore, the immune system gets a boost. Scientists tell us that the production of the natural killer cells, our defense against cancer cells, is reduced with sleep reduction. What about dreams? All of us dream, only the only thing is some remember their dreams, some don't. Dreams may be our means of coming to terms with ourselves, our emotions, and our problems. During sleep and dreams, the junk is, the, the computer is cleared, so to speak. The junk is sent into the, the, the dustbin, and then we keep the ones that are useful for us. So sleep is really a natural healer. Then next to the, then let's go now to the second half of the question. Is sleep really a waste of time? As I said before, Edison and Maggie are great proponents of the four hours sleep. They may have been more productive, but the fact remains that sleep is not a totally unproductive luxury. Because during sleep, there are important things happening in, the, in our bodies, just like our computers don't really get switched, totally switched off when we switch off. We need sleep for learning and memory. The recent memory is converted into long-term memory, and this is a memory consolidation process, just like our computers transfer data from the temporary files into the hard disks. Before big events, athletes go through their motions and their behavior. Animals also practice escape from predators in their dreams. Sometimes our brains are kept working as in sleep when something is worrying us. The German chemist Kukuli recounts how he worked out the structure of the benzene ring from his dream of a snake biting its tail. And of course, benzene is a six-carbon cyclical structure. Famous stories like Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are products of dreams. It's interesting that the, the, these are rather scary and on the weird side, just like the nightmares that patients with PTSD have.
It's unfortunate that artificial daylight has enabled us to push our bodies to the limits. During artificial light, what happens is that the, the cues, the, the light dark cues are taken away and our biological clock operates on its inherent rhythm. Its inherent rhythm was thought to be about 25 hours, two minutes in the olden days, but a recent study from Harvard tells us that it's really 24 hours and 11 minutes. So what happens now is our physical bodies are adjusted to the artificial day and night, whereas our biological clock is running on the 24 hour, 11 minute cycle, which means that we are losing 11 minutes every day. So you've already lost 77 minutes by the end of the week. No wonder you're tired. I rest my case with this Irish proverb that a good laugh and a long sleep are the two best cures for anything. Thank you very much. I hope you sleep well tonight and sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs>